And I want to share with you the top, the top 10 biggest mistakes freshmen are going to make in college. And I know it's a little bit odd to talk about that and kind of go that direction, but I'm going to, I'm going to uh, share with you the top 10 biggest mistakes, but also it'll be on the flip side that you'll know that this is, it'll be more proactive and this is what we should do, okay? So number one, neglecting self-care. When you get to college, so much less of your life is actually scheduled that you guys a lot of times will not choose right in eating, nutrition, exercise, sleeping. And you know, I'm sure someone has told you this, but uh, one of the main things that you can do in college is overeat. <laughs> and some of you guys are looking forward to that. That's okay. A little bit is fine. But usually at most dining halls, whatever you have punches or clips or whatever they call them at your school, you're going to go in and it's, it, it's every meal is all you can eat. You can stay there for as long as you can until it closes and they clean up and get it. And every meal is all you can eat. That also means that every meal, you can also have dessert at every meal. There's a soft serve. On almost every college campus, there's cookies and brownies and soft serve machines and for every meal, breakfast. So, guys, I had ice cream at breakfast every couple, the first couple weeks every morning. That's not what you want to do. You're not going to feel right, you know. Every now and then it's fine. So... How many of you guys, if you think back on your last week, if you think about how many desserts you had, try to think of how many desserts you had in the last week, right? This is Thursday, so going back to last Thursday. Don't, don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody. Shh. All right, how many of you guys had two or more, two or more desserts? And this is for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Okay, that's like three quarters of the room. Five or more desserts. Five or more desserts. It's okay. No, I'm, I love sweet. Okay, that's maybe 10 or 12 people. Seven or more desserts? Yes? Seven or more? How many? Shh. How many did you have? Your guess. Ten. Ten desserts. That's one every, that's two, one every day and two, three of the days. That's great. So, but imagine most of you had two, one or two desserts. So if all of a sudden you have, if you have one a day for dinner, that's seven. So just to give you a sense, if you have one every lunch and dinner, that's 14 desserts immediately. So just be aware of the changes. So... Uh, don't eat dessert 20 times a week. It's a good, uh, it's just a good principle of life, okay? Uh, number two, number two mistake, okay? Uh, number, uh, let's see, is not sleeping enough. Sleep is your friend. And I know some of you guys are like, I know, I love sleep. But sleep is, I want you to repeat, ready, with me. Sleep is my friend. Ready, one, two, three. Sleep is my friend. I want you to think differently about sleep. You have a question? No, no, I thought, didn't you say like, how many of you think differently about sleep? Oh, sorry, no, I said I want you to think differently about sleep. He was right now, I'm like, it, and questions, we're gonna break in about five minutes for questions and any questions about what we've talked about, and then at the end, I forgot to tell you, at the end, we're gonna actually have a time for maybe 10, I hope 10 minutes of, uh, of questions about anything. So. No holds barred. You know, you guys are seniors. What do you have to lose? So uh, I want you to think of sleep less about, like, as a necessary evil and, like, ah. Oh. But as your friend, it's going to make you more productive. It's going to make you uh, more healthy. It's going to make you do better in school. So we're thinking differently about sleep, right? So you, you have to force yourself to get some sleep. And I tell you, it's the hardest thing. Just like that eating habits. How many of you guys have eaten something after midnight in the last week? It's okay. All right, so that's like maybe half of you. That becomes, shh, shh. That becomes a normal type of deal, right? Where you can eat really late, you'll stay up late, you're with new friends, you're talking about stuff. No one's going to be there to, hey, you have curfew. There is no curfew. So... That's number two, not sleeping enough. Prioritize sleep. You know, I slept through a 2.30 class one time. My Tuesdays, my senior year, my only class of the day was 2.30 to 4.30. And one time I slept, not like took a nap and overslept through it. I slept from the night before all the way through it. So I'm not speaking from any point of judgment. I love sleep. I know, thank you, I appreciate that, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, you guys just wanna clap, you just wanna. Okay, number three. This is very important. Okay, we have a trivia question. This is number, th we have a trivia question. What did, 
how much student debt, student loans, did the average 2016 graduate graduate with? I'll give it to you within $5,000. $28,000. More than $28,000. $33,000 is within $5,000. What's your name? Daniel. Daniel. Okay, Daniel gets a book. $38,000. Did you guys hear what I said? $38,000. So... Mistake number three is getting into debt, and that's either credit card debt or, that's credit card debt or student loans. And I know some of you guys are like, I don't have any money, I, that's okay, you know. You can take some student loans out, but I would, I wanna beg you, okay? After working with college students for 20 years, okay, listen to this. I want to beg you, I'm actually, I'll get, right, ready? Take as little student loan debt as you can. And, do not take a dollar, not one dollar of credit card debt. You understand me? Not a dollar. Only use your debit card. You don't need to use credit cards and build your credit so you can buy a house later. That's a lie, okay? That's a lie. Don't, I know some people have told you that. Do not do that. Whatever you do. I've seen people's lives wrecked. Hi, Stephen. Glad you're back. We missed you. I've seen people's lives wrecked by debt. I sat with a couple uh, who's probably going to get married soon. They're, they're one year out of JMU, okay? Listen to this. The gal has $114,000 in student loans. Do you know what my house cost in Harrisonburg? $130,000. Her student loan payment was almost twice my mortgage for my house. Every month. You know how much money she makes this year? She's got an okay job, $37,000. It's not bad, you're right, it's not bad, right? Do you know how long it's gonna take her to pay this back? Like 650 years, okay, so, like never. But no, I've just seen people's 20s and 30s ruined. So whatever you guys need to do, take as little student loan as you can and never, ever, 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 Get credit card debt, okay? And some of you guys might have some now. Okay, listen, shh, shh. That's okay. We're all gonna start at different points, but we're all gonna go the same direction with this money thing. And so you're gonna do whatever you need to do over this summer to pay off your credit card debt. If you have any right now, guys, whatever you need to do, start, with, start at zero when you start college. I promise you it will be better, okay? Don't do it. Uh, all right, there's two ends. When we talk about money, just we're going to talk about money for maybe another minute, and then maybe we'll break for questions. Is that okay? Um, no questions about anything. Uh, our, our like halftime break, not the end. It's not the end yet. Uh, there's two ends of the spectrum, right? There's abundance, that there's enough money for everybody, there's enough to go around, and then there's, what's the other one? Scarcity, scarcity right? There's a scarcity and abundance mentality. And all of us fall, shh, shh, all of us fall on a certain spot in that spectrum, right? So a lot of it has to do with our family, how we grew up, how, a lot of it has to do with our parents, what, what situations did we grow up, how did they think about it, some of our friends. But I want you to think, where do I fall, like, scarce, you know, abundance would be like, there's enough money to go around, I never, I never have to worry about that, really. I've usually had all my needs met, even some of my wants. And then scarcity is like, we're always worried about money. Like, I'm always nervous about it. So I want you to say, where do you feel, where do you fall in that spectrum? Okay, and turn to someone right next to you, just for like 10, 15 seconds each. I'll switch you and then we'll time again. And share, where do you fall on that spectrum? Kind of share, you know, where do you think you fall between abundance and scarcity? Now again, this is not how much money you have, it's just how you think about it. How do you feel about it? Switch, if you haven't, switch. All right, time. No more, you guys are done? Titans forever, ready, time. All right, guys, you guys, yeah, you lost your, uh, Okay, so, shh, this is very important to remember. 
You can live on Trump Golf Course and have a scarcity mentality about money. You can drive a Range Rover as a senior in high school and have a scarcity mentality about money. You can grow up with seven brothers and sisters living in a two-bedroom house and have an abundance mentality about money. You can. It's harder. It's harder to do. So this is not how much money you have. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about how do you feel about money. And how you feel about it will dictate your actions. Right? It'll dictate a lot of times what type of job you're even thinking about. It'll dictate how you feel about college. It'll dictate how much you take out on loans, those type of things. So uh, listen to this very, very closely. Money can't buy happiness. Right? We know this. Shh. But mismanagement of it and mishandling of it can cause you a whole lot of heartache and give you a harder life. Big doors swing on little hinges. So you guys have the power of time behind you. You guys know that even, I would encourage you this summer, start investing some money. I, I work for a nonprofit called Young Life, and I went on Young Life staff right out of college. Do you know how much money I invested per month? And this is actually in the book. You know how much I got paid? And this is 1997. This is how much I got paid for my yearly salary. $13,500. And this was not like 1950. This was 1997, 20 years ago. And so I could not invest much, but I started investing $10 a month. I started investing $10 a month. And I'll encourage you guys, figure that out and start doing that this summer. You will not believe what happens time-wise. Time is on your side. Because you, if it works, might have 30, 40, 50, 60, maybe 80 years left to allow time to work for you. So, okay, start investing. Time's on your side. Money. I think that might be it for that mistake. All right, that's it. Uh, mistake number four, spending too much time playing video games. <laughs> I know, and so video games are fine for a little bit in moderation, but I'll tell you, I've firsthand witnessed guys, more guys, but guys and girls play video games, but this seems to be a problem with some of my guys that I've mentored. They'll play video games 10, 12, 14 hours a day for a whole weekend, for a whole week, and you just don't have much to show for it afterwards. And I, a little bit here and there is fine. I'm not telling you. I'm not that, but I'll just say, if you, if you walk like a zombie through your college experience playing video games, I'll just tell you, you're going to come out on the other side and not have anything in your hand to show for it. Like, well, I'm really, really good at Fortnite. I am, I am unstoppable. I've won 97 times. You know, so, but that's just not going to, yeah, thanks. That's not going to be much when you graduate. So that's, 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 that's a quick one. All right, one more. Can we do one more and then we'll stop for questions? Is that okay, Ms. Rouse? Is it, okay. All right, one more. This is not getting to know yourself. Not spending the time that is necessary to get to know yourself. That's, part of, that's a big part of what college is. Okay, so... Uh, exploring, trying different stuff, a lot of times you'll let other people determine your identity. Please don't do that. I wonder, I want to ask you these questions. How much study have you done about yourself? How you're wired? What do you like? What are your passions? How do you, do you know your calling? Do you know what you're supposed to do? I would also say one of the biggest mistakes is not exploring spirituality. Right? Like, does God exist? If he or she does, What's he or she like? Okay, and this is a perfect time for you to do that because you're going to be away from all other influences, right? You're going to be away from all other influences your entire life, most of you growing up. So what I want you to do is explore that thing. Figure it out. What do you believe? What do you believe for yourself? 